Good morning, good morning, good morning. 22nd of June. Oh, there was a steam fair on at the weekend. I went to go and see. But I ended up going to um, Lyme Regis instead, didn't I? So time just races away, you know. I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's the middle of June. That'll be, that's miles away. And we've already had the longest day. Longest day yesterday. The old days certainly seem long in the surgery. We've got all the fans going. <coughs> Excuse me. Nearly shaken off my cold. <coughs> Nearly. But not quite. Yeah, we've got a like um, <coughs> an industrial unit. <coughs> and uh, we have the front door open and then it's got some delivery doors so we have those open at the back and then uh, fans fans blowing all over the place but it's still hot <coughs> it's got quite a large south facing aspect to it and, uh, and of course it's been really warm you know 30 degrees so it's nice, you've got to take the smooth with the smooth. This is the way things are going to be. No snow in the winter anymore, but uh, hot, dry summers. <clears throat> it's supposed to be warm, dry winters, wasn't it? And hot, wet summers or something, I don't know. Whatever it is, they try and frighten you into turning off your air conditioning, like anyone in this country's got air conditioning. <laughs> Save the planet. You don't need to save the planet. The planet can save itself. If every human being on this planet died off, the planet wouldn't care. It wouldn't worry a bit. It would just take its time. A couple hundred million years, it has turned us all into new coal and new petrol. And uh, it'll be fine. Life on, life on planet Earth would thrive without humans. You don't need to save the planet. <laughs> we need to save ourselves. Talking of saving yourself, I had a few new patients in yesterday. Two, three, three family of four who are coming in in sort of dribs and drabs. And... Uh, Dad, dad's uh, he's got the Crohn's disease and the people with good sort of long-standing Crohn's disease have got quite a distinctive sort of not gaunt but quite stringy you know thin type appearance and so I went through his medical history I said you know he said oh, I've got a touch of Crohn's disease a touch of Crohn's disease so I was like okay so what do you take? And he said, oh, I've taken a string of medication for it. You know, so many that he couldn't bring it, you know, hadn't remembered to bring it all in, couldn't remember any of it. And so he said he'd email it in. And then I said, what else? And he said, well, I've got a touch of asthma. So I said to him, what, what, what sort of a touch is that? <laughs> He's like, Crohn's, you told me you had a touch of Crohn's disease. And in fact, you've got Crohn's disease. So does asthma mean like, you know, he looked at me like he didn't understand what I was saying. So I said, look, okay, do you, do you carry an inhaler? No, okay, fine. So you have got a touch of asthma, all right, fine. But um, I said, what's the problem? He said, oh, I've got some root treatments. Some, I've had some root treatments, so, but they're crumbling a bit. So I looked in there and basically all his back teeth were just roots. <laughs> just all flat with the gum. So I said, yeah, they crumbled a bit. <laughs> But that wasn't the funniest bit. The funniest bit was when when his, his wife came in first and she said, when she went out and he went in, she said, there, she said, you'll have problems with him. So, you know, you think I'm bad, you wait until you see his teeth. So I thought, oh God, you know, how bad could they be? And of course they're bad, aren't they? But I mean, they're like, they're, that's the whole backgammon theory, isn't it? They're so bad, they're good. And uh, I said to him, look, you know, and he was looking, he was looking all depressed and everything. and. And she'd obviously got him in a headlock, got him up the dentist. So uh, 
I said to them, suppose I said to you, all you need is a scale of polish. How do you feel about that? He's like, he was like perked up. You know, he's like, oh, I'll be quite, I'll be quite happy with that. <laughs> I said, well, I said, I don't believe in euthanasia for teeth. And until they make your face swell up or, uh, you know, you come back and complain that you can't <coughs> chew anything, I suggest we leave well alone. <laughs> He's like, really? <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> I said, the best, you're coming at the best time to have nothing done, because he was the last patient, it was half past four. I said, if you don't want anything done to your teeth, about half past four is about the right time to come in. It's a bit like um, the best time to buy a car is on the last working day of the month, because if they've got targets to meet, then they might want one more car to meet the target, you know, it makes, might make a difference to them. So. They might be inclined to uh, to give you slightly better discount on the car in return for uh, meeting a bonus, you know, getting a trip to Monte Carlo or something. So, and uh, I mean, timing is everything, isn't it? For example, I mean, <laughs> this the sun came in, and uh, he said, I, "I think I need some fillings." So I looked at his teeth, and basically, they're not, you know, they're not beautiful teeth. They needed a good scale and polish, and he'd got impacted wisdom teeth, lowers, and decayed upper wisdom teeth. But otherwise, he's, he's got a classic mouth that's never seen a dentist, you know? But, so it's got like a few black dots, stains here and there, and generally not very nice. But not full of fillings or anything and not needing fillings, as far as I can, we did bite wings and everything, everything checked out okay. So, um, and his mum's in with him and I said, uh, you know, you need to uh, have the upper wisdom teeth out, <coughs> which was complicated a bit because he's on factor eight deficient. And, um, um, you know, and we'll think about taking the lower wisdom teeth out as and when. Um, yeah, but doesn't he, doesn't he need any fillings? And I said, no. I said, no, he doesn't need any fillings. So, and when, when someone says, when someone sort of almost prompts you <laughs> to say that they need fillings, then your little red bell should go off in your head because that means almost certainly that they have been to see another dentist who has said that they need fillings. And therefore, what they've then got, if they've got this internal conflict, this stress between the dentist that they saw perhaps a year or two ago, told them that they needed five fillings, and then you telling them that they need no fillings. And the patients are not stupid. They do know, well, they are a bit stupid, but, <laughs> but they are not so stupid that they think fillings heal up. Nobody thinks fillings heal up, and that someone who needed five fillings would, would you know, could leave the problem and it would get better. The problems in dentistry only go one way, and that is worse. They get worse. <laughs> so, yeah. So what? So no fillings then? No, no. Okay, okay. Oh, oh. And they're looking at each other, and I know, like, they're, 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 they're this look that they exchange. You know, it was like oh, that's very strange. You know, because you know we both know that your last dentist said that you needed five fillings, and we were expecting to come in and be told that now you needed ten fillings. And, uh, and and what's going on, you know, and what should we do, and what do we do now, you know, I mean, what do we do now? I mean, obviously, this is, is this good news or is this not good news, you know? Does it, is this dentist either honest or incompetent? <laughs> so they have that little bit of thing and watch it, I've watched it all happen, you know? But I can't, and the problem is, if you start saying, oh, well, did you, have you seen a dentist? Has he recommended some work? They start, then they'll start to think, oh, he's he's on, you know, he's going to try and try and fool us into having the same work done that the previous dentist recommended, but he doesn't know what it is, does he? So he's going to have to ask us. And then we'll tell him, and then he'll say, oh yeah, yeah, of course that does need doing. But not me, no. That's why timing is everything. I said to them, did this this dentist who told you needed five fillings? I said, does she drive around in a big flashy car? <laughs> <laughs> it's wicked really but you know if someone if someone's prescribing fillings that don't need to be done I don't 
I'm not going to beat myself up too much for having a bit of a joke at their expense. Just one joke, you know, just one wisecrack. That's all I ask, you know. I'm not going to report them to the GDC. They're going to carry on getting away with it. That's stuff between them, their conscience, the GDC and the CQC. They're over-prescribing fillings. I don't even know. I honestly don't even know who this dentist is. But I'm going to allow myself a wisecrack at their expense. So, uh, yeah, so that's another issue of timing, isn't it? You know, if you want to... Uh, if you want to avoid dental treatment, then don't go to see a dentist uh, towards the end of January when his tax bill's coming in, or uh, when he's just uh, bought a new car and he's starting to make the HP payments, or uh, if it's a limited company um, on uh, or, or in June, in June for a limited company because we have to pay our tax on the first of July. Oh. Timing. Timing is useful at roundabouts. Timing is um, important on the National Health Service because, um, particularly in March and April, because the NHS financial year end is 1st of April, and so you've got all sorts of people in, in, in March, people are sort of, uh, you know, NHS entities, let's call them, are sort of divided into two groups, those who are underspent on their budget and those who are overspent. And uh, the ones who are on budget or overspent will, will not do anything in March. They'll just be coasting, you know, they won't want to incur any more costs that they're not going to have reimbursed. And uh, then you've got a whole different raft of entities that are desperately trying to um, spend or work to get to meet their targets, you know, which are make the March 31st targets. And so, you might go see a dentist who is completely under, under his done, realises that he's under target and he's worried that next year his NHS uh, contract is going to be decreased because he's done, he's done less NHS work. And so he'll be desperate to try and do as much work on everybody as possible. Um, I'm not saying unnecessary work, I'm just saying <laughs> things that may have been overlooked last April will get done in March. And, uh, and then in April you've got the exact uh, reverse, haven't you? And technically everybody is reset and should start again <clears throat> just doing one twelfth of their annual work in April. But in fact, um, uh, if you've you know if you've just literally spent March working twelve hours a day trying to just fulfil your unit, units of dental activity. You might decide to have a week or two off in April <laughs> because you're the sort of person that <clears throat> doesn't work in April, May and June and does work in January, February and March. So, so uh, you know, <clears throat> if you're an NHS patient, be aware, just be on the lookout for weird activity <laughs> in March and April. <laughs> Yeah, so the patients we're getting in. <clears throat> I had a lady in yesterday. She's a teacher. She's got, she's in her forties, I suppose, and <clears throat> quite a lot of active decay, or you know, like stupid cervical cavities caused by Mary Berry. Mary, effing Berry, has got no teeth of her own, and is responsible for the nation losing its teeth. She's the anti-CDO, like the Antichrist. She's my, my <laughs> The CDO is the anti-CDO, so I don't know what the anti-anti-CDO would be like. She's absolutely, <laughs> between the two of them, let's say they're gonna be responsible for the nation losing its teeth. But this woman's a, <clears throat> a teacher and uh, uh, she came in, she'd had a tooth out, and it was the last thing her dentist did before they retired. So I don't know whether the dentist didn't like her very much or, or just decided that uh, he was going to give the next dentist a, like, a, a restorative problem. So he decided to whip out her upper left four. This is literally a few weeks ago. And she was told that she needed a, an implant. So. 
excuse me. So um, it's all um, <clears throat> the art of dentistry. You know, I'm, I'm convinced is in the treatment planning. I think if you're, you know, if you're like half decent at playing chess and thinking ahead and looking at all the possibilities and thinking of all the things that can go wrong, and your treatment plan, then the job itself is not that difficult, and you don't really run into too much trouble. But if you're not good at treatment planning, then you will run into a lot of trouble, both in trying to carry out your treatment and, and also the long-term consequences of the fact that it's not functioning probably optimally. Um, but, she, you know, she says, I'm a teacher, and in the staff room there's just full of cakes. There's always a plate of cakes out, and that's all we eat. We'll sit around all day and eat cakes. And I said to her, well, if I'm going to do... What I'm going to do is a modified Maryland bridge on this where we're going to do a, a post crown on the five, the four is going to be the Pontic and the three is going to be a Maryland wing and we might need to reduce the uh, three plately just to give it the space for the wing because almost always they're in occlusion but um, you know these things work well you know they last a long time especially with this GC cement, this GC sem I must, I must uh, podcast on some of the materials I use because Having been sort of out, out of the profession, semi, you know, working in Harley Street and only sort of working part time for 10 years, I can, I have actually got quite a good perspective on what, what's changed in the last 10 years, materials wise. And the thing that has really changed is um, things like the, the materials, you know, the cements and things. But you stick these Maryland bridges on with the, you used to use Padnavia X and now you use this GC Sem stuff. And I <clears throat> tell you, it frightens me. Oh, it frightens me. I break into a sweat when I try and stick these things on because I know that <clears throat> if it doesn't work, thank God they always usually do, um, I'm never going to get it off. You know, I'm not, if it's not right, you know, I'd, I'd have to drill it off and start again. And, and blunt most of my diamond drills doing it because this, this cement is so bloody hard. So <clears throat> it's frightening. You have to get it trimmed up. You've got like you've got like 20 seconds or so to get it trimmed. Get any excess glue off because if you don't, within the 20 seconds, that's it. You you'll never you'll never you you spend you'd have to do resect the gums and spend you know two hours get drilling it off. It's just and blunting all your diamond drills. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I said to her, if I'm going to do all this advanced dentistry, then um, you're going to need to um, <clears throat> change your diet. And I think that's going to be our biggest challenge. Not deciding between an implant, which only solves one problem and costs twice as much, as a bridge, which solves both problems, the post-crown and the, and the missing tooth, and, um, and costs half as much. <clears throat> so... But her biggest problem is going to be changing her diet because, um, she, you know, I said I'm not going to put all this advanced dentistry in your mouth if you're not, uh, if you don't uh, stop eating sugar. She said, oh, I think I, <clears throat> I can cut down on, you know, a bit. And I said, no, you don't understand. You've got to, cut, you just got to say no. There's got to be no sugar in your diet. No sugar. Just say no. If anybody asks for your cake, just say no. Thanks very much. I'm okay. It's a bit of a change, isn't it? Not as di it's not as difficult as sort of going on a diet. It's a it's just a change of food for her. With me, it's less of everything. <laughs> Got this ridiculous letter back from the hospital saying, Mr. Watson needs to chew uh, 20 gram portions, and he needs to chew every one 20 times, and he needs to wait 20 seconds in between mouthfuls. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what do they think I am? A computer program? I mean, can you imagine what would happen if I sent a letter out to my patient saying, you've got to use a toothbrush, it's got to be exactly 9.8 centimetres long, and you've got to hold it at an angle of 45 degrees and brush up and down five times and then move one centimetre sideways and move up and down five times. <laughs> when they say, fuck off. <laughs> this is a classic, like a classic means based approach to the problem. Nothing about the ends, you know, nothing. <laughs> this is apparently is my problem is why I'm overweight is I'm not chewing correctly. <laughs> I'm, nothing wrong with my chewing, I can tell you. That. Oh God, these people, they can't help you. These experts, the experts cannot help you. 
it doesn't matter if you're pregnant and you've got a health visitor or you're dying and you've got a heart surgeon or you've got you're fat and you've got a dietitian they, they they're under so much pressure to appear to be experts they come up with all this unsubstantiated bullshit <laughs> and expect you to take them seriously because they're an effing expert. So you're not an expert. You're just pretending to be an expert. You're not, just do something. Show me your expertise. Do something expert. Don't say something expert. Anyway, I said to this bloke, look, we're not, <laughs> I said, you need one filling and a scale of polish. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna just put you on the back burner and then you can come in as and when you, you have problems, you know? So, oh, he loved that. He loved that. I think, in a way, it's because I'm a bloke and he's a bloke, and we're about roughly the same age. And I'm like, I said to him, "This is going to really annoy your wife, isn't it?" He said, "Yeah." <laughs> He's going to wind her up something terrible because I've got her in. I got her in. I've got her all disclosed. I've got photos of all the plaque on her teeth. We've got a massive plan to uh, sort her teeth out. You know, over three visits. And his teeth are arguably so bad they're good, and and, uh, and I went out and I said to, I took him out sorry because I couldn't resist it to the waiter room and I said, fine set of teeth, fine set of teeth, so very very little to be done, <laughs> and then and then I dug back inside the surgery quick because I thought I'm not going to get into a domestic, <laughs> I don't mind causing them but I don't want to get involved, you know what, you know what it is, all right okay I'm at work. I'm going to have a nice day. You do too. All right. Bye. Bye.